morning everyone it's Mish here and today we are going to be doing another page in uh, our Daphne's diary uh, glue book journal so we've done quite a few um, pages up to this point so if you haven't um, seen the previous videos um, you can check them out in my playlist um, but for today I thought we would um, do a little something play play a little bit so I want to do as a background a brick wall. So I got out my 3D brick wall folder, uh, embossing oh, folder, and I ran through um, some multi Canson mixed media uh, paper. I ran that through my die cut to get some brick walls because then I just thought we could play. So I've already um, did a little bit. Um, with this one here just to see what the effect uh, would be like um, So what I'm using is I have this box which I can't fit it all in my uh, On my screen there, um, but it's just a box that I had a delivery in um, a cardboard box with a lid um, and I've just put my craft mat on the bottom and I'm just playing with my oxide sprays so the ones that I have are, um, I have the uh, stain, the vintage photo stain. I also have a walnut uh, stain. And then for the oxides, I have hickory smoke, fired brick, uh, antique linen. Oh, that, that's a stain. I have three stains and the um, wild honey. And I can list them in the, in the description below. So I'm just going to randomly do some sprays so I'm just going to start with the fire brick and I have a little bit of water in a in a mason jar here so that I don't end up spilling it all over my uh, all over creation and I had just a little brush here in case I need it I also have some gelatos I'm just I'm not sure if we'll, we're gonna use them or not and I did pull out a little bit of white gesso that I've had for a million years and I also have a little thing of oh, gray some gray uh, acrylic uh, sandstone I've got some other colors off to the side here um, believe it or not this dates back it's pretty almost vintage um, I started to do toll painting uh, in the late 80s and uh, this has survived. I have a lot of toll paints or I don't know what you want to call them now um, that have survived for that long um, and they're still going strong. So that just goes to show you. Okay, so I'm going to first take some fired brick and I'm just going to do a little bit of an angle. The other thing to note is that I have a well ventilated room and um, I have a little uh, air filter on, running in the background. You might be able to, he to hear it. The other thing is that they do, it does stay in your hands. So I should have grabbed some of my latex gloves, um, but they're across the room there. So we'll forego that for right now. So I'm just going to start with doing um, some fired brick and then I think I'll do just a touch of the hickory smoke because that came out just a little bit more gray than what I wanted but I think it's okay to put that down a little bit and then we're gonna do a little bit of wild honey just to make that more of an aged feel and then I'm going to use a little bit of the vintage photo now these are stains so the stains um, are more translucent than the oxide sprays which do uh, tend to go a little bit uh, more flat and opaque so this is the walnut stain I might have used too much of that one and then this is just some antique linen and again this is just the sprays okay so so that's our first one and I'm gonna put that on Got another little glass mat here. Let me put that on the glass mat. And then, because before we go on any further, just want to let that dry really well. 
Um, the other thing that I did uh, when I did this one, um, which gave that kind of outlined the bricks a little bit better, is I basically just then rubbed it on on the bottom of what the spray was left there. So I'll probably do that on the other ones. I just want to get our base colors down first. So again, we're just going to do some fired brick and then we'll do a little bit of that wild honey. I love that color. These, uh, it's coming on to fall now and those colors just remind me so much of fall. Okay, and then we have the antique linen. I'm not going to do, on this one here, I'm not going to do any of the hickory smoke. But I'm, and I'm only going to do, so this is the walnut spray. So I'm only going to do a little bit in the corners. I think that's enough for that one. And then this one here, which is the vintage photo, I'll just, from a higher angle, just do a couple more little squirts of that. Um, so then that's, so then that's that one. And then for this last one, which is this one here, I just had done it as an example. I just cut them smaller. The other two I cut to fit the page of Daphne's diary. Um, but this one here, again, we'll just do some, get some red down and then get some wild honey. And then let's do a little bit of this dark. darkness. Might be too dark, but that's okay. Once it dries, we can lighten it up. I don't think I'll do, I think I'll do a little bit more of the fired brick up there. And some more of the, and then a little bit of that. All right, so I'm going to go away and I'm going to dry these. I want to do it out in the kitchen because there's my space is quite small and I don't want to have my heat gun in here and end up setting my paper on fire or something. So I'm going to run out to the kitchen and then um, to already that's starting to define. Um, so I'm going to go out, going to dry these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone out and I've given them um, a good dry, but you can see there's all kinds of spray left in here. Right, so I just rubbed it on the bottom. My camera kind of cut out there. Um, just lightly on the bottom and you can see it kind of I need I think that's a little bit too wet so I need some paper towel and I'm gonna sop up actually what I'm gonna do so bear with me one second is I'm gonna get some tissue paper keeping a box here and I'm going to sop this up with some tissue paper because then I could use the tissue paper in a future art project. So, and, there, and then I'm not wasting that spray. So at some point, I'll just keep adding to this tissue paper and then I can use it as a, a background to an art journal page or something. So I'm just going to set that off to the side. And then I'm going to put, I think, a little bit of the walnut stain. I'm just going to spray just lightly a little bit down there. And then I'm just going to take that and rub it on there see what happens and we get a lovely definition see how it just kind of highlights those bricks um, and, but yet there's still some space kind of like a real brick wall where parts of the brick is all busted up okay so with this one here I think I'll do the same this one here just looks a little bit flat to me so I've got the walnut and vintage photo. I think I'll do the vintage photo on this one. So I'm just going to stand back, just put a little bit of spray on there, and then just rub that down and see what happens. 
And again, we get that really nice. I'm just going to do a little bit of the walnut because I want it just a tad darker on this side. All right. So I'm kind of liking that for the feel of, of the, and it's just, again, it's just going to be background. I want to, uh, fired brick, I think. Not really liking, it's just a little bit of this, that. It's just a little bit too white in that corner. And then we'll let that dry because it looks shiny when it's when it's wet, but then it it dries well. Maybe a little bit of walnut stain. The walnut is definitely the darker, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to just spray again and just hi highlight those bricks a little better, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone away. I've dried them relatively. This one here I didn't spend too much time on because I'm not really going to be keeping that one. So I've got two here that I'm thinking is the right size um, for the background. So I'll probably use one of those two. But I got this one out and I went to my gelatos, uh, the translucents, and I've picked uh, poppy seed, a hazelnut, and a peppercorn. And what I have done already is I've just gone along to some of the ones uh, that are really embossed up and I've kind of highlighted them and then just taken my brush that comes with it and just rubbed that out so that it kind of makes some of those bricks really really pop up. Um, it looks quite stark on the on the video but so I'm gonna do that um, with these two so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the darker color down on some of those quite raised ones and just randomly go along and do that and this one here is the uh, pepper is the poppy seed okay and then I'll just do a couple on this one then I can decide later which one that we will choose. So that's the poppy seed. And then I really liked the hazelnut because the hazelnut, it's hard to see, but it's, it's more of a rusty or red, red tone. Um, and these bricks, there's a good mix of those kind of, uh, well, brick red color and the darker, more, more uh, muted ones. Okay, so then that's just that one. And then we'll do a little bit of the darker. And I don't want it to be too dark, so I think that's all I'll do with that one. Uh, and then we'll just rub that out a bit so that it's not so, so that it looks like it's blended right in. And these gelatos are water soluble, so this little brush later I can just go clean that up. And then one thing I kind of thought about doing, and I'm going to test it out on this um, one of the little sample ones. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this one because I think this one has a good, has a good, um, variation of some lighter spots and darker spots. I just want to rub that out a little bit on the bottom. All right, so the other thing I kind of thought about doing, put those aside for right now, is to get my the toll paint and I had chosen um, one of those colors, sandstone. I'm just wondering if that might be too dark. And I have a little, wee little liner brush here. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of 
paint down just a tad bit on my glass mat off to the side here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and then I thought I'll uh, spritz that with a little bit of water. Just to, that's alcohol. I don't want that. It's too early in the morning for, <laughs> for alcohol. Okay, and then I'll just water that down a little bit. Okay, and I just need to get a piece of paper. <laughs> there goes my air. My air filter. My room is so small that you just move an inch and something's flying somewhere. All right, so just kind of thought about the thing with this though is that you do need to try to keep your brush clean. Otherwise, I think that's nice though. Just adding some highlights in between the brick spaces. I think I like that. So I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna have a fiddle with these two um, and maybe put some highlights uh, in in amongst the brick spaces. And see with the oxides, it soaks that up so that uh, it just becomes very subtle. And you could even go with a lighter color, like a cream or something. But I thought this sandstone, where it's kind of like a gray, a gray base, would, would be more effective. So I'm gonna go away, play with that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm um, just going to let that dry. Um, and while that's drying, I just want to go over um, the idea that I had for um, today's uh, page that we're going to do in, in the book. So if you've been watching along, uh, you'll know that I cut out um, all kinds of uh, bits and bobs from the magazines. And then I just store them in, for now, these little uh, DVD clear plastic and I have been collecting these little uh, magnifying glasses. So I've got this one um, in the most current issue. Unfortunately, I used, um, I cut an image from the backside of it. So I kind of cut a hole in it, but I had another one and I think this one was from the first, maybe issue number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I've already kind of put it on some 110 or 100 pound cardstock because I, I do want that firm. Um, so I've got my magnifying glass and then, so I've been wanting to use that. And what kind of inspired me actually is <laughs> when I was doing a flip through, I kind of looked at this page and I went, ooh, bugs, I don't know if I would want the bugs. But I think as a kid, I was very obsessed with bugs and butterflies. And, and like I said, I, I lived in Chicago. So when I moved to, back to Canada, um, when I was about nine and was in the middle of the woods, like all these bugs and things came, came, alive, came alive in my world, kind of really changed. So um, when I was thinking about the magnifying glass, I was thinking, oh, how appropriate, like you're gonna, you're gonna look at some bugs. So that's kind of my idea. And to do the magnifying glass, like I said, I've already put it on some cardstock and I'm gonna cut that out. And then for the, the glass part, um, I already took some layering dies and put that through my die cut machine. And I got um, a little acetate um, that we're gonna put sort of as the glass part of the, um, of the magnifying glass. And I had already cut out uh, just from some gold uh, paper, um, a ring. So I'm gonna, the idea is to cut out, to cut the ring off and then put this one on uh, with the, kind of with that cut out. But my dilemma was, how am I gonna affix the ring to the acetate? Um, and I wanted about the same size so that the acetate isn't showing kind of, I guess I could make it the inner circle and glue it. Anyways, there's a, there's a number of options, I, I guess. But what I chose to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Sizzix double. Hi everyone, I'm gonna put a quick edit in here because as I was um, 
getting the video ready uh, to upload, I realized that a section had been cut out. Um, so what I was um, saying about um, how I was going to get the ring to fix um, to the plastic acetate was by using um, double-sided adhesive uh, sheet. Uh, and the one that I used is by Sizzix. So if you're not familiar with this, um, what you actually do is you peel off one side and put your um, cardstock, which I'm not going to do, but put your cardstock down on top of it um, so that it would be like this. And then you get your uh, die cut. I, I would cut that off, uh, run that through. And then what happens is that um, you have then a side that you can peel off, um, which is makes your die cut uh, adhesive on on the other side. I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna cut this out. Um, I will fussy cut out the magnifying glass, and I'm going to cut out some bugs. So when I get all that prepared, uh, then I'll be back and we'll uh, start putting together the page. Okay, so. I think I've gotten organized, not entirely sure. Uh, one thing that I did notice is that when I cut out my multimedia paper, I was thinking for some reason this was eight, um, and it's actually eight and a half, um, but that's no big deal because what I'm gonna do is set this aside before I spill something on it, and I'm just gonna cut down uh, one of my pages because there's nothing saying that they all have to be the same size. so. I'm just going to use my scoreboard to make sure that's even. And then I'll just cut it at eight and just double check that my panel is eight. Pretty sure that it is. And we'll just cut that down. All right, make sure that's even. Okay, so now that should work perfectly. And voila. So I was kind of debating which one that I like the best and I'm going to go with this one. So I'll set this aside and I can use that, this for the other one for, um, for another project. And I'm just going to use um, just some Elmer's glue uh, to tack this down onto my, onto my page. And I thought about kind of where I'm going to place the elements and I'm happy with, um, with my wall being kind of in this way. One good thing about using glue is that you do have a little bit of wiggle room where you can kind of move your image or piece around a bit to make it fit. Okay, so there is our background. So in issue five, um, I've cut out some of those bugs and bits and also on um, page six um, were these lovely watercolored flowers. So there was a number of them. So I thought that I would make use of those. Um, so I'm gonna start with uh, the flowers. So I did fussy cut them out and along the edge, I just used my pit pen uh, black brush and I just went around the edges um, just to sort of get rid of some of that uh, white space. Uh, for now, um, as far as the main image goes, I'm not going to tack it all down because I may be tucking some things underneath bits. So I'm happy <clears throat> just to kind of get it in a general, in a general orientation. All right, so I want the flower to be like it's coming up from the bottom, it's growing up along the wall. So we'll stick that down there. And our leaves can go over there. So kind of like, like this. And it's okay that I get some Elmer's. The thing about using glue on this though, is you need to be careful because it is um, water, water, uh, soluble, so water reactive, and the glue has, uh, you know, some water. So I'm just gonna wash my hands here before I get stuff all over the image. So you do have to be careful about that aspect. 
Okay, so that bit's down. So then I want it to tuck these flowers kind of in back there. So this one, the stem, funny enough, seems to be along the same as that one. And I do want to cover that little piece of stem there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of the stem and then just kind of come up the middle of the flower for now. And I'm going to lay that stem right on top of that one so that it's kind of going over, over top of that one so that it looks like it's part of that stem. Okay. And then this one here, I just want to tuck in behind that one, maybe like so, to make it a little bit higher. So again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in the middle uh, for now and stick that in there. The thing about getting magazine paper wet with glue is it just becomes very floppy. Okay, so I want it something like that. This one here, just want to tack this end of the stem down. Okay, and it doesn't matter at the moment that that doesn't match. So then I had this other one that I cut out and I was kind of thinking that I wanted to put, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut that off. I think I'll cut it kind of like, maybe like that. You don't have to get too fussy. It is, after all, a collage type. Collage type, okay. So then we'll stick that down. And then I do want to use this leaf to kind of come up. to come up uh, maybe like that yeah kind of like that so we'll stick that down Oop. let's see okay and I think I will just tack this stem down a little bit it's gonna cut it off but if you've got the patience to work with little fiddly things, then I think the payoff is pretty good. Okay, so I just wanted to lift this a little bit and maybe, no, I had this other leaf that I was, I think there's too many leaves at the bottom. What if we, what if we tuck that And, oh, over here. Kind of like, yeah, I kind of like that. Just, just having it kind of pe peeking out. Yeah, that, that looks good. Stick that down. Okay, so that's sort of our flower background. I can tack it down later, so we're just going to leave that for right now. So then for the magnifying glass, I've got the handle cut out. And, oh, I forgot to go around this one. Um, I'm just going to go around it quickly. So I, as I said, I've put this on to some heavy cardstock and just to give it some strength. Um, because after all, it is a magnifying glass. We need this to be kind of like a focal point, I guess. Okay, so just going all around there. Right, and then uh, that worked out really well um, using that, uh, the double-sided adhe adhesive. So I just peeled the back off and just got it around the rim there. And then I'm just going to use um, probably a little bit of Fabri-Tac, excuse my head, because I think Fabri-Tac actually will adhere better to plastic. 
Now I, I could have used it for the whole rim, but to try to get, I don't have this in a, in a fine tip. I, I did, but it all got clogged up. So I, uh, I wasn't going to try to do a fine line around to attach uh, the rim. So I'm just going to let that sit for just one second. Press that down so it does it here. So hopefully that will adhere. Okay. So then I cut out some bugs and again, I just went around the edges. So I was thinking um, to put the, a butterfly up here in this corner. This, this one here was in the corner of the page. So I need to kind of stick it so that it's, it's on the edge of the page a, a little bit, but I thought I'd put that there and then put this little butterfly here in this space, which I thought was great. And then maybe have this little bug kind of craw crawling up the wall a bit. And this bug, when I was cutting him out, I, he, uh, got the, um, he got an appendage busted off. So I thought, oh, that's not quite dry yet. Let's push that down. I thought he would be kind of somewhere crawling up here. I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to put the butterfly down up here in that corner because I know for sure that I want that butterfly up in the corner there. And then this butterfly, I'm only going to for now just do the middle because once he's dry, I can lift the wings up a bit to give them some dimension. And then this guy, I want, see that, right. So we got that down, put that bug on later. And then I kind of want it to look a bit like that with the handle going over into that space there. And I want to put, I kind of wanted to put this up on dimensions, but I could put a dimensional right there. Um, I've got some right here. So a dimensional, for those of you who may not know, is just foam tape cut out uh, into into shapes. Um, so if you had a roll of uh, foam tape, you could do the same thing. Um, just just cut out cut out your your own shapes. And so I'm just because I want this to lift up a bit, but I don't want that foam tape to peek out because then it spoils the illusion. And then I just want a wee little piece. Wee little piece right up in here. Okay. And if I could, I'd put a wee little piece there, but I think it might be seen. So I'm just going to move this over for now and then just put our bug, our buggy bug over. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cute. I think I want that there because our other bug, we can just have, oops, I don't want to break his leg. His leg is very flimsy. My goodness. Okay. So I'm thinking this bug could go there because the other thing I want to add to this is I want to put a saying and I want to put everything has beauty. And where I got this from is, um, well, I've looked through, I've got some art by Marlene uh, adhesive quotes, and I have the small talk from Tim Holtz. But one thing I did in the winter time when I had time and couldn't get and get outside is I just went to my printer and I just printed a whole bunch. And this is the one that that uh, came from. But I just printed a whole bunch of sayings in kind of different font and different sizes. Um, and 
I did that. So I just kind of went to that binder and that's where I got this Everything Has Beauty. I could have printed it off as well from my um, labeler, but I was happy with that. So I'm kind of happy with that arrangement. So I think I'm going to stick our Mr. Bug down. And I don't want to stick his feet down because when his feet are all flopping around, then it gives it gives them um, dimension. And one thing about you know any kind of art journaling, especially um, when when you're doing more of a glue book style, is you you do want to try to create some interest and some dimension in your page. Now this is going to flatten them a bit, but I can still see, it's probably hard to see there, um, that his legs kind of popped up. So I'm just going to take the backing off my foam tape. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can hear outside, but there's a bunch of crows outside my window and they're not happy about something. They can be a squawky irritating bird that's for sure um, okay so I want to stick that about there okay <laughs> oh my god that's cute and so where are we gonna put this bug I kind of want him sort of crawling up that leaf because I want to put my saying right across, I think I want it just right, right across, maybe a little bit higher, right across the bottom. And again, I'm going to just um, take my brush marker and go along the edge. You know, this is a subtle effect, but I think that it does kind of soften the image a bit in a way so that it's not so stark as in, you know, jumping right off the page, that you kind of darken the edges and it seems to blend in a little bit more. And I did ch choose the, a white saying as opposed to printing something off, you know, with a black background and white lettering. Um, because the page is quite dark itself with the, with the brick wall behind it. So I thought that that would, um, the, that the white lettering would be more effective. And, you know, initially when I did the flip through in the magazine, I was like, as I said, you know, oh, bugs, oh gosh, do I want to put that in my, in my journal? But everything has beauty if you look at it in a certain way. And I don't know really much about these kind of beetles because I didn't research them, but I think that they eat other bugs. And you know what? I think I want to put that up on a dimensional. So I've got these other little little ones. Ugh. And it probably would be better if I had of put this on some cardstock because this is just paper. So I'm not sure if that's going to hold up well to be in on a on a on dimensionals, but I do like the look of it on a dimensional. So I'm just going to quickly adhere this down on a piece of cardstock. Let's take a second with just some good old glue like so and pull that down. And then I'll just I, I will need to kind of re-ink the edge. Um, if you're more like a kind of a grunge and you're doing your journal, um, you know, more like a, uh, more like a junk journalish grunge type, then you can just ink your ed edges with some oxides or something. But I want to do it this way. Okay, so, sorry if this is redundant here but I do like the edges to be to be blackened. 
Okay, so then when I get this down, I just want to put it on dimensionals because then it, it'll pop up a bit. And one thing I'm notorious for doing is if I don't keep my fingers along the edge there, then I oftentimes my marker slips and I mark on the front of the image. And then that really gets me, especially if it's, you know, a one of a, I don't have an extra. Then I'm like, oh, you silly, you silly woman. But if I keep my hand close to where I'm marking, then it kind of, um, it prevents that from uh, happening. Okay, so I got these wee little dimensionals that will stick down on here. And I think I'll use a few so that it doesn't sag in the middle. Okay. And then we'll just quickly get the backing off them. Sometimes it's quicker just to use a pokey tool because then you can kind of poke through the back of it and pull it off without trying to get your fingernail underneath it. Okay. So I'm thinking around, oh, there's the seagulls going. Maybe the crows are upset at the seagulls. I don't live that far away from the Halifax Harbor, Bedford Basin, Halifax Harbor. So I often get, especially today's a rainy, a rainy dreary day and you often get the seagulls coming inland and I think it ticks off. Oh there, I'm happy with, I'm happier with that. All right, and then we'll get this bug, get him all sorted. He's kind of crawling up from the sign and he's crawling up this leaf with his little tendrils. Okay, and you know, one other thing that we could do if we want to get a little bit uh, you know, I'm all about being excessive. Um, if we want to put a little bling bling on, is we could get for the butterflies. And, may, and maybe that's a good contrast, is we have these beautiful <laughs> butterflies with their bling bling that everybody loves against the, against the little, uh, that's the beetle bugs. So we can get that down. Oh, look, he's beautiful. She's beautiful. And we'll put, there's two different kinds here. One's more of a opaque and one's more of like a crystal one. So anyways, we'll, we'll get that down. And what else can we do? I think, I think that's good. So uh, we've got our little magnifying glass. You know, we're reminding ourselves that, you know, everything has beauty. So let's go ahead and stick it into our book. If you've liked this video, please give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, you know, my channel is building and it just, just, it just makes me so happy. I love uh, all your comments. Um, you know, I appreciate those as well. So let's get this stuck in. I do post, uh, I try to post a new Daphne's Diary every Friday, um, so keep on the lookout for that. I'm also doing um, other playlists, so so have, have a look. And there is our page for this week. So I hope you have a great week, um, that you, you, know, you stay well, good things come to you, um, and uh, bye for now.